All right, so you're looking to get started in real estate and you're flat broke or you don't have a lot of money or you don't have a crazy amount of savings. I'm gonna show you how to leverage money to buy real estate in this video. All right, in this episode, I'm gonna give you multiple steps of how to leverage other people's money to buy real estate and ultimately you're gonna consistently rinse and repeat and do this multiple times. So let's go. All right, let's talk about the first one. That is banks. Everyone has heard about banks. You can go in, talk to your banker, tell them like, this is the project I'm looking at. I'm getting it at a, you know, a discount. It's worth a hundred thousand. I'm buying at 65,000. Generally banks like to see a lower loan to value, somewhere less than 75% loan to value. What does that mean? If the land's worth a hundred or the house is worth a hundred thousand and you're getting it for less than 75,000, you're below that 75% loan to value ratio because you can get a loan for 75 5,000, that is the tops. Next is like local credit unions. Local credit unions are sometimes easier to work with than the big banks. Like the big banks would be considered like the Chase's or the Wells Fargo or Bank of America. Local credit union would be like, you know, Fort Pierce Credit Union or Ent Credit Union. And they oftentimes will have a little bit more leniency. You can actually get to the actual banker. And a lot of times credit unions are member owned. So they wanna see you succeed. They wanna put the money back into your business. That way they're building the actual community. And then that leads me to community banks, the small community banks, like the Marine Bank and Trust or Fort Pierce Community Bank, things like that. That's just an example of the community banks. These are generally smaller, they're locally owned, they're funded by people that actually live in that community. And then when the community grows, the bank will also grow. These are usually the easiest banks to get loans from to buy real estate, to leverage debt, to leverage money to buy real estate. All right, so when you're leveraging credit to buy real estate, leveraging debt or leveraging money to buy real estate, it's all about your credit score. You don't want to have a lot of credit out. You want to make sure if you have a credit card and you got a $5,000 limit, you never want to go past that $2,500 amount. That is over 50% of what you got available on that credit card and you don't want to leave a balance. It looks really good to see when a bank or a credit union or a community bank is checking your credit, they wanna see that your debt to income is very low and you are very responsible at utilization of credit. So how do you look responsible? If you got a $5,000 credit card and you got $4,999 on that card and you're paying the minimum payment each month, that does not look responsible whatsoever. But let's have another scenario. You got a $5,000 credit card, you put $2,500 on there and you pay that $2,500 off over three or four months and now you have a zero balance and you got a, a funds available of 5,000, you now look like a very responsible person that utilizes your credit in a responsible way. This is what banks like to see. And a lot of times banks and lenders, they wanna see you less than 50% of your debt to income. What does debt to income mean? Basically, if you make $5,000 a month and you spend $5,000 a month, you are at 100% DTI, that's debt to income. But let's just say you make $5,000 a month and you spend $2,500 a month, that's half of your income. So now you are at a 50% DTI. Lenders love, love seeing people below 40%. All right, next let's talk about VA loans, FHA loans, and conventional loans. I love VA loans, that's Veterans Association Loans. Now you might say, hey, I'm not a veteran, I can't use it. Or you might know a veteran that could use it, but VA loans, those, these are 0% down loans. Basically, if I go and buy a house that's worth 100,000, I can literally get $100,000 loan from the VA, but I would have had to have served in some type of military capacity. Then there's FHA, the Federal Housing Administration runs this. They federally back these loans, they insure these loans for lenders to be able to give these loans out and usually usually you only have to come up with about three percent so if you're buying a hundred thousand dollar home or a hundred thousand dollar loan you're only coming up with three thousand dollars towards like closing costs towards down payment things like that and then there's conventional loans usually conventionals you have to come up with a little bit more like ten percent or you sometimes even have to come up with 15 25 percent if it's an investment property conventional loans are a little cheaper they're a little less expensive like origination fees are less points are less and really points and origination fees are like items or it's exactly the same thing what is an origination fee so for instance if i'm going to give you a hundred thousand dollar loan i'm going to charge you three points or three percent origination fee 
you are going to pay three thousand dollars for that hundred thousand that is the front end cost that's my best easiest way to explain what points or origination fee is but conventional loans don't have as high a points or origination fee because you're coming out with more out of your pocket. And a lot of times, you know, you can even sometimes get a lower interest rate, but FHA and VA loans are usually easier to get, you know, lower credit standards, less money out of your pocket. And VA, VA is probably the easiest loan to get if you're a veteran, but they're a little bit more expensive. They're a little pricier than a conventional loan. All right, next let's talk about hard money loans or private money loans. They really can be used hand in hand. When we say hard money, usually we're think it's like hard to get but it's not really harder to get it's actually easier to get but you pay harder interest what do I mean by that so for example my first hard money loan was four points 12% interest per annum and none of that interest payment went towards principal pay down so for example I got a hundred thousand dollar loan I paid four points so I had to come up with four thousand dollars four percent basically a percent is a point same thing I had to come up with four thousand dollars to buy that house at that closing four points and then 12 percent. i paid 12 percent on one hundred thousand dollars and you divide that up by the monthly payment and that's what i was paying towards interest each month and i had six months to pay it off so i had to sell this house in six months that's a hard money loan a private money loan is usually from like friends family or your neighbor or someone's got a self-directed ira and these are generally uh lower interest like eight seven six percent sometimes nine percent interest and there's no points, there's no origination fee, there's no coming to the table with $4,000. Private money is usually a lot less expensive. I wanna give you a lender that helps you buy land or houses or any real estate really. They really try and stay on the residential side. So commercial, they're not really too much into that, but they'll help you with buying land and building a house on it. So I wanna give you those this link and it's my friends over at Kogo Capital, but it's the landsharkscapital.com. This is probably gonna be one of the easiest loans for you to get, and they base it off of the asset. It's kind of a hybrid of hard money and private money, but it allows you to get started really quickly in real estate. All right, so I've given you a lot of information. Go ahead and drop something in the comment box. If you know of another way to leverage debt in real estate or leverage credit in real estate, just drop a comment down. Maybe something I've missed, something that you have done before or you know about, definitely give give the other uh, watchers and viewers some information as well. And I love seeing these comments. I always try and reply to them as well. All right, so I was talking to a friend the other day. His name's Craig. Hopefully you're watching this video, Craig. I was talking to Craig about how to get started in buying land or how to get started at like leveraging debt and credit and other people's money in real estate. And he's been with the school board for a while now. He's about 61 years old. And I was talking to him about how other teachers have savings accounts of 50,000, 5,000, sometimes 10, 20, $100,000 just sitting in a savings account earning them 0% interest. And I, I brought the fact to him like, Craig, what if you borrowed you know, let's just say $5,000 from one of your teacher friends that are doing nothing with it and sitting in a, in a savings account earning them nothing and you paid them, let's just say five or 6% interest on that $5,000 and you found a piece of land worth $20,000 that the seller is willing to take a discount on it because they're motivated to sell it. So you're gonna pay the seller $5,000 for his $20,000 parcel of land. So you're paying 5,000 for 20,000. You're literally getting this land at a value of 25 cents on the dollar. So you're getting a massive discount on this land. You're gonna pay your teacher friend 6% interest on this 5,000. You're gonna, you're gonna set up a period of time to where you pay him back in a year or two years or whatever. Now you're gonna go out and find a buyer that's willing to pay what this land is worth $20,000 and that you're going to charge that buyer 9% interest. So you're paying your teacher friend, let's call him Mark. So Craig is paying Mark 6% for that 5,000 and then your buyer Betty, buyer Betty bought the land for 20,000 and she's paying 9% interest. So you get Betty to give you a thousand dollar down payment and a couple hundred dollars a month. How many times can you do a land deal with other people's money if you're borrowing $5,000 at 6% interest and, and selling land at $20,000 at 9% interest. The arbitrage is crazy. And now you go out and talk to other people. Maybe Jim's been school teaching for 25 years and now he's got 50,000. He wants to 
put in on the deal or the next deal, you can literally do more real estate transactions than you ever believed possible, ever imagined possible by leveraging other people's money, leveraging debt with private lenders or friends of yours. You know, we all have a warm environment. For, for example, Craig, his warm environment or his uh, sphere has been the school board, school teachers. He knows other school teachers. He can talk their languages. You might be a doctor. You might be an attorney. You can talk their languages. So just utilize this. This is one way to leverage other people's money, credit, and debt to buy more real estate. All right, this last point you're going to love very much, and this is exactly how I started my land business. I've done over 280-something land deals to this day. So let me talk to you about another method of using your buyer's funds to purchase land. So for instance, I found a piece of land that was for sale for $500, and the land was only worth about $5,000 or so because there were some issues with it. It wasn't accessible. You had to trespass against state land to get to it. So what I did was I set it up with my seller. She was gonna sell me the land at $500, but beforehand, I had her sign a purchase agreement that she was allowing me to buy the land for $500, but she was also allowing me to pre-market that land to buy a seller because that's the biggest thing. People are always concerned of, what if I get stuck with this land? Well, what if I can't find a buyer? What if it's not really worth $5,000? So what I did is I put it on Craigslist and I advertised that land for $5,000 for sale. Mind you, I'm buying it for 500. I would allow seller financing or I would offer seller financing at $500 down and $400 a month for a total purchase price of five grand. I literally had a buyer the next day. So I went and purchased this land, wrote the seller a check for $500, and then the next day, I got $500 cash from my buyer. So I got my money out of the deal. I now no longer had any risk on this deal. And the following month, I got $400 cash. I continued and rinsed and repeated and repeated and repeated. Now I can buy, like for instance, we're buying a city lot in Colorado Springs. We're, we're paying $16,000 for this lot. It's worth about 35,000. So I got it under contract. I sent that contract, that purchase agreement to the title company, and then I advertised for a buyer to come and bring me $16,000 down and then $500 a month for like the next, you know, however many months till they pay that $35,000 off at 9%. You know, run that by a mortgage calculator. I'm not giving you the exact details of that, but all I'm trying to say is I used my buyer's funds to purchase that land and the title company closed it and now I'm the bank. I hold the deed of trust and the promissory note for this parcel of land that I didn't have to come up with funds. I didn't have to borrow money from a bank. I didn't have to use my credit. I didn't have to leverage a bank's money, but I leveraged my buyer's money. So they came to the table with 16,000. Now learn from my little mistake. One thing that I forgot is I should have gotten a little bit more funds, a little bit more money from my buyer, not 16,000, but about 17,000, because then they would have covered the back taxes and the closing costs and all that. So I did have to bring about $1,000, $1,200 to the table to cover the closing costs and the back taxes, but it allowed me to do a land deal. I didn't have to come up with 16,000, I only came up with 1,200. So use that, put that in your tool bag and use it. All right, as you well know, the real estate market is absolutely exploding hot. I've got a tried and true method to teach people how to buy land at crazy discounts and sell the stuff in your sleep for maximum profit. So if you're interested in looking how to get started doing that, you know, go below in the description and click on the link, thelandsharks.com. That's thelandsharks.com. Schedule a call. My team will run through your goals, what you're looking to do. And if we feel like we're a great fit, I'd be honored to coach you.